Two of the top players in the last 10 years from this area. B.J. Young and Bradley Beal square off as Chaminade faces McClure North next on ESPNU. Bradley Beal, a McDonald's All-American, an elite offensive player with NBA range. He signed with Florida. B.J. Young is a dynamic scorer who is always in attack mode. Get those puppies organized and a good challenge under duress. Young again. Still pass Sanchez. Drummond shot contested. Rebound ripped down by Nobles. Numbers. Look out, B.J. Young, and he's got 15. That is tough. What's up, what's up? This is Love and Loyalty to the podcast. It's your boy Juice Osama. It's your boy Clutch, man. And let the, my, the guests introduce themselves. St. Louis Legends, do your thing. Man, it's BJ Young in here, man. 2011 McCool North State Champion, University of Arkansas. You know, alumni. You know, I played with the Houston Rockets for a year, played overseas, Europe, China, and I grew up right here in St. Louis, man, and we finna talk basketball and whatever else we wanna talk from. You know where I'm from, man. I'm a nigga. Uh, you know, I'm from a little bit of everywhere. You know, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wrap that shit up, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, y'all know, man, it's Pep, Mr. Go Live, Gang Shit, No Lane Shit. You know how we coming, man. Let's rock. Let's get it. I said, we gonna talk to y'all about everything. We talking sports, threes, we talking everything. I say one of the shit, the top questions that motherfucking man came to me about, and I'm not even a hooper. I got partners that hoopers. Down in St. Louis, niggas always talk this top five, all this shit with all these local niggas. Mm -hmm. I don't really know too much about it. I ask everybody that I do know who hoopers. They give me, they give me four names, the same four names. Who you, who you, who you got, Pip? If, if you have to say your top, your, top, your, your five. top five. Your These niggas only give me four names every time. They start right off with it, don't they? <laughs> but look, it uh, it depends how you want to talk about it. Cause are you asking me just top five from St. Louis, or top five in college, or top five like guys that are actively we always we home we in the men's league? We yeah, we just gonna say in, in the men's league. Yeah. In the men's league. So when you say that, that I'm not talking about the guys that's kind of overseas and always gone. So we talking about the people that's kind of always around the city, mm -hmm. and you know, in and out type thing. But here, majority of the time, uh, I gotta say, don't include. We don't include ourselves? No, no, no. no. If you, you top five, you top five. Oh, yeah. You definitely go pep, for sure. This gotta, it's an order, or are you just saying five? I'm just saying five. You got to go pep. You got to go Munson. You got to go Tay-Tay. You got to go Brighton. And you got to go Big Marco. And this is Chris Head, also known as Baby Boy. Every day you wake up, you got the opportunity to do better than you did yesterday. Life is all about choices. Shop choices clothing. I think that's that's the five if you ask. Yep. Tay Tay Brighton, Munson, and Big Marco. Coopers. That's the five. But answer. individually, if we matched up with each one of y'all, like I see me taking it down, like. <laughs> but I only, I, I, but I only, I, I didn't even I consider, I didn't consider down. you in there. I consider you a guy that had here. enough success, so we don't include that makes sense. him in it. But I fuck you. Think. So, so, BJ, you down here, you hoping to leave. Everybody who's your name, you better than uh Yeah, but I, I would say active. And them right now, who I like going to see who? Who I like going to see play? I like Lil Bri out here, who locally, like, Lil Bri out in these yeah. cats like Breon, that. You say, I niggas, you about said, niggas can't go at Munson. Nobody can go at Munson. I, 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 I got a, a tall ass. I want to go, I want to like, know your top five mm. from city to county, historically, to you. Your, you know, your, or your favorite five, your favorite five, but that you like to see. That's including league. Like just out of St. Louis? Yeah, from, you know, from the PHL to the county that you've seen. League and all. League and all, it's yeah, easy. And league I want to go with, league. so when I don't name some of the older guys, because I've always want to go out the guys that I was that in watched. competition mm -hmm. with and mm -hmm. seen. So but if I why? Don't, why would you do that? Because that's all the, the guys was... They like, were, but I can't. I didn't, James, I, didn't, I didn't see him. Yeah, but I consider him. When I say I consider him, but I was able to compete against him. 
so I know him. But I'm talking about late 1990. Now, I can't. I just know what Larry I was told and only seen him so much. Right, right, you know right, what I mean? Okay, okay. You tell me, yo, yeah, like your look. Like yeah. 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 So I would go. I would go. You got to go, Brad, Jason, Larry. It's pretty simple, easy. Then you go, D. Miles and David Lee. That makes sense. That's talent. Even, that's that's the five best basketball players. Man, if you ask me, I would say Tatum. Of, of basketball talent, yeah, and what, so not most successful, just basketball talent. Yeah, and so what, let me rephrase and, and, that. Then. But you have like, can't be shot. We played in college. Yeah, can't play it. Like, like, like better you got to take it a little bit far, a little bit far. You got to play the college. Cam uh-huh. Cam was better than Ben. In my opinion, if we just talking about pure talent, when you talking about making it's it pro, it, but you got Tatum, you talking about you making got, it you pro. Got, you got Brad, you got me. Because if if you think. If you're talking about pure talent, yeah. So when you're talking about pure talent, making it pro is not just talent. There's a lot of other things that contribute Larry, to that. Larry you know was a mean? hooper. If you're talking about pure talent, so let's just keep it guards. That make it easy. Who was that comparison? He said Cam and who? That was a good comparison. I said Ben. If you're talking Cam about ben. pure talent, you got to go Brad. You got to go Brad, Larry, Jason, Cam, and then Phil Spock. I'm trying to see, is it BJ's? Talent-wise, bro, you gotta go BJ. I'm so much more you talented go BJ. than people in basketball. Like, I can use my left, my right. I can slow down. I can speed up. I can play in the half court or the full court. You could play. I could just be a straight defender. So what separ- so separated you from those that finished the highest See, level? these guys understood their roles on teams early, like, what to do. I want to be like, I want to go out here and play hard. Oh, yeah, everybody. I feel like, but I didn't, you know, I was so young in basketball, I didn't understand you got to grow into these roles. You know what I'm saying? Some people just know, shit, this is my role the whole career. I was just catching shoot guy. I was just, what's your name? 3D you guy. Line, career. Line anybody else, you beat anybody. Yeah, I could, yeah, we, you put me whatever position. I'm, I'm still well, I, remember, I remember seeing that picture when you went to Tried out with the Lakers and shit. You took with Kobe. My man said, I'm not, like I said, I've been knowing you since we was fucking kids. So my man said, like, now I want this nigga thinking, like, okay, game on the line. We get one shot. You taking that shot or Kobe taking that shot? I'm gonna take Kobe. That's my man. I'm like, I ain't gonna like, buy like, any other thing. Like, 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 I really do love Kobe Bryant. Like, I really do respect him. Like, I ain't never telling nobody about that moment. Like, when I. When we met, like, I, this is what happened that day. I was at the Lakers tryout, sort of guy, R.P. Kobe. And uh, I'm in the locker room. We going to, we walk into the to the court. And say, you you cold or whatever. We supposed to be walking straight in the training room to the right or left. And, and I look, I glance. I'm like, damn. Oh, shit, that's Kobe. I, nah, but that's him. <laughs> like, he was in the training room icing his foot because he had tours Achilles. And, um. And I was like, the, everybody kept walking straight. Peyton Siva, if you go, I can go get the picture off the internet. It's on there somewhere. I know Peyton Siva was in there with me and a couple other guys. And I was kind of last in line and I double taked it. I veered off into the road with Kobe. Everybody <laughs> else kept walking straight. They're like, hey, I'm like, man, man it's, it's, it's Kobe. I'm like, bro, like, if you call, I'm like, I'm shaking around. I'm like, Kobe, bro, like, I'm BJ on bro. You my favorite player. I swear I got you, but anybody else. Like, I'm kind of like, like a fan of that one. Like, bro, I'm like, supposed to be for the gold kid. I'm like, but no, I, I got to work on it. I'm like, man, I, I really do think you're the greatest player ever. Like, you my favorite player. I watch you intently close, like, every detail. Like, and he like, man, he laughed. He kind of chuckled. Like, I mean, for real, he like, man, I appreciate it. He like, yeah, he like, yeah. He like, you want to go get this, man? Go get your camera. Bro, I'll break that. <laughs> so, but none of this. I'm going to get my camera. Man, it, 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 China, China was in our just, I think, random white chain. Some so standing. So, I, hey, take this for us, man. Man, I froze in time with him. Took the picture. And I went back in. I went back in the, um. Uh, that shit fucked the locker room. Nah, it ain't, it ain't, it's Kobe Bryant. I just went back. Put my camera up, went back to the court, tried out. <laughs> it was that, you feel me? Kept going to the rest of my trials. That motherfucker, seeing him, <laughs> yeah. seeing him, did that moment make you want to just 
going there and kill even more. Yeah, it did, it did. And it was like, I wasn't thinking about it. I never would have thought he would have left the earth at a young age, you know what I'm saying, for right. something like a helicopter crash or something like that. Because it was just my favorite player. He was alive, you know what I'm saying, as right. a regular person and shit. So, you know what I'm saying, it was just – maybe appreciate life more to be honest like you know what i'm saying like no cap like being back from china i was living overseas when it happened i was away from my family for years at a time like probably three years was i not helped you know like you know, i was right. over there i would facetime him sometime so when it happened i was like damn the corona had just hit and uh you know we was i was actually about to come back to my family because that happened I'm like, damn, and the corona hit. i'm like man it's getting crazy out here right right it's getting crazy in the world and People love Kobe in China. Like, man, they worship that dude. They got gems built to him. Nobody else got gems. One, another thing I can say is Tatum, he was he got some clout in China. He got, got he got his face on Gatorade bottles out there. I ain't no, ain't gonna lie. Brian and none of the other cats, they ain't had a face. Tatum was on Gatorade bottles out there in China. Like, they like him. They like him out there. I know. He did some other time overseas too, didn't you? Yeah, I did a stint in uh, Germany and a little bit in Canada, but... I ain't get the opportunity in the big, you know what I'm saying, in the big boy leagues. I'm over there. And for me, I ain't like the fact you having all these small time teams and they they judging you, like, and they never played the game. Like, I'm like, <laughs> the best players, like, respectfully, are from America. If you play college basketball in reality, you can play at some level overseas. But the thing is, you're not competing against overseas guys. You're competing against another American for a limited spot. So my team or somebody else's team can only have three or four three Americans. Four Americans. Right. If, we, if, if, if they can have 12, we we'll all be over there. Yep. You know what I mean? But for me, I just feel like I had a bigger purpose than actually playing. So I just had to do it because that was something I always dreamed about doing. Like, I want to play overseas. I want to play pro. So after I did it inside, I feel like, bro, I can impact the world by giving the information to kids that I didn't necessarily receive right. so they can go even further to a kid like BJ. So, like if you got somebody like BJ, in reality, if he get the same grooming that somebody like Jason got, he might be ain't better than Jason, but he ain't sitting here right now. Right. So he's and being down in St. Louis, like grown, he, in the league. We'll definitely see that shit. If BJ Young was grown, if he had the handlers that knew what goes in every day of being a pro, that's what I tell you. It's not all about talent. Yeah. Is we need to be grown. And, and that thing is like a. Eternity type of thing. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? It's like a, it's like a hat. It's like a, I might do a favor for you now. Yeah, 100%. And a couple years down the road, you owe me a draft pick. Yeah. Like, yeah, you 100%. might be that draft pick coming up. So, like, when Jason said, Mike told him, hell no, you got to get out of here. Mike just said, you, you, should I stay? Hell no, you got to go. <laughs> you might be that pick that they got to get. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, that's what he mean is grooming. Like, that's real yeah, like if, I, if I get my foot in the door right now, I work with thousands of players. And right now, I'm really going in the process of having my foot in the door. So now, we, instead of me being overseas, playing for pennies, so I can just say, yo, I'm overseas, yo, I'm overseas. That's, that was the reality for me. I wouldn't have been making as much as I would have liked to make. Instead, I created a platform where kids can come, get trained, and get their grooming, and be put in the position. School, right? You got a school. Yeah, also got a, we definitely got a school, and uh, that includes that puts it, my school, private academy, that puts everything in one for me. Where's school at? In Columbia. And you know, a lot of people be on me about why it ain't in St. Louis and stuff no. like that, but the resources that I was able to receive made it best to uh, be in Columbia. But with the school, outside of having a platform for basketball and able to really control our own kids' destiny. Type thing, the difference between our regular our education and a normal education is our school is entrepreneurship. So we ain't we're just learning math, yeah, science. Right, we teaching the real stuff. How right really? now you start a podcast? Yeah, how old are you? Thirty two. He thirty two, right? So right now we teaching eighteen year olds. What you want to do? We making them think. When I graduated, I'm strictly yeah. hooping. If you like, if y'all teaching them kids how to in school. Work with cameras and do this updated yeah. technology. That's perfect. We bro. teach them whatever they want to be. So like we, when you graduated private academy, you have to start a business. You can't graduate without having a business. That's so tough. it's forcing them instead of us going to school for seven, eight hours a day, 
just watching the clock. We might do one assignment the whole day. They really got businesses. You know what I'm saying? They really learning in the field. Like, they really making own money. So now when it's time to go to college, they got an option. Like, yeah, I'm going to go hoop. But in reality, I'm going to be building this business. And that's where you really learn. Like, I learned my biggest life lessons running my business. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, so like, that business thing. Like, I got a brother. My brother, he big on that, like, entrepreneurship. He, like, a lot of people really need to get on that type of time. But I know... That's a scary ass thing. Truth be told, like that's hella scary. You know, legit, just like fuck a job. You got bills, you got kids, whatever you got. Stop all of that and try to make this business work. Well, what legit just push you to legit say fuck it and put everything on the table? So it was different for me. I can honestly say, since a little kid, I used to always tell my mom, I'm like, I don't want to work for nobody. So I think part of the reason I quit playing, I just, I honestly felt destined for it. Like it was some in me. But I deal with talented people every single day that's kind of scared to jump off the porch with it. And my biggest thing, they be like, man, I don't want to do this and that. I'm tired of going to clock in. Well, quit. Do exactly what it is you want to do. Right now, we got so many people in our community living paycheck to paycheck. So why not struggle how you struggling anyway, long as you got your basic needs to build the life yes. that you really want to see. See, that's what I be telling my Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Like Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Mm -hmm. Saving. Most people don't understand saving either. You have to save money. Like, listen, isn't meaning like if you got a job, you make twelve hundred a week. You can't say I make twelve hundred a week, bro. I'm gonna get that back next week. Hit the club every week and keep thinking next week, next week. You gotta say, I right, this club money. I right, if I got make twelve hundred a week, I'm gonna put up three fifty a week. So next week, instead of twelve. I'm gonna make 15. And then I'm alright, I'm gonna try to save 450 off that next 1200. So next week after that, I'm gonna make six, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to make two bags. I'm gonna have something to put up. And then I'm gonna hit the club with this little extra paper. And next week after that, I'm gonna save another three. That's how you get up. I can get up, I'll ran it up off a regular, I'll run up off a regular job just off saving and then knowing when to invest. Or hit the casino and go to drive the game lotto. You hear me? Yeah, but, these, but these you gotta say you know, up first. You can't just you can't. But we not that's being that's taught that. that. A real job. I can't tell you nothing I learned yeah. in high school. I can't tell you nothing. But I can tell you what I done learned after six years of working for myself. The good, the bad. Like a lot of us in our community, we only learn the hard way. Our people done told us everything, but we gotta pump our head first. You get what I'm saying? So it's like I'm gonna bump my head in this business since. So once I get it right, it's you know coming. what I mean? Yeah, you go to work. If you go clock in, you go clock in at Emos. And you sell a, and, and y'all make, the business make $1,000 in this hour. You making that $13 an hour. You work with four people. So that the owner of that business paid out. He probably paid y'all $100 per hour and what he got to pay for that. In material use, he probably paid out another $100 and then made $800 in an hour. So do I want thirteen dollars or eight hundred dollars? I want to be the man. But what I have understood yeah, is nothing wrong with like not wanting to be a man. Or a Honda. Yeah. And it and takes I, a team. And see, I think we don't understand that either. I learned you got to be selfish as you got older. Have, did y'all learn that? For did sure. y'all like you? Ever, like you young you used to be, oh man, oh, this and that, more frugal and this and that. But that's act, that's being weaker. Like. To say no is hard. Because we grew up because we say no. But because we grew up say no. Because we grow up we're not having nothing. So your mentality, your mentality, your mentality, we all thinking like, when I get it, I'm putting my partner on. Man. Put, you gotta put them on with information. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta put yeah. them on with information. Because if you give them ten dollars, they don't anytime somebody don't work for something, they won't cherish. They won't, and I've been the same way. Anytime somebody gave me something, if you put I in a position to work or do a job, that's Any, so much smarter. You don't even know. Even like, if you're young and they like, man, this nigga make me work. You don't even know that they helping you. You don't they know. Help you. I like, damn, he really did that. Like, and I can say that this year with my school, I swear to God, this is, I never in my life been depressed. I can honestly say that. And and I think is what we got to understand is the difference between depressed and broke. A lot of times we be broke and we think we depressed. Yeah. This, you this broke. You ain't depressed. <laughs> and I realized that over the That's last year, when I opened up the school, I expected Brad, I expected Jason, I expected all these people just to throw money at me. And what I realized during that time, rich people don't invest in startups. Rich people don't invest in ideas. They invest when they see the money. They got to yeah. see it work. Prize Academy got to go through a year, go through a two years. 
how hard you gonna work for your own dream before I put something behind you? Right. And I had to realize that, and I was frustrated. I'm like, y'all gonna really watch me struggle or do this and do that? And you can just change it like this? But now I appreciate it, and I appreciate my business so much more because sweat came behind this now. You know, I got sweat at the end. You know what I'm saying? I really put this work behind it. So now I can come to somebody like, hey, bro, this is what we did. These are our numbers. This is how I'm going to cut costs. This is how we going to make money. This is where you can see. And in the situation, I got the receipts to show you. Yeah, yeah. In the situation like you in with all them kids you touching, you don't know. Not saying you don't you don't want anything from any of these yeah. kids. You don't know which kid is going to be big and come back and be like, this is a person that helped me. me. Yeah. And we doing it both ways. So we don't do it just on the basketball. I might have a kid that go to the NBA. But I might also have a kid that started a billion dollar business here. So the vision is in 10 years, all our donors are kids that went here. I want to have donors from every kid that graduated from my school. You make a million, you don't think they're going to show no love? Got and we kid. set the foundation of got business for them? Uh, we had three kids from Dyer. Three kids. So we hoping that number grow. Uh, I, didn't, I had a coach from New York. So my coach wasn't from here. So we had a lot of East Coast kids. Mm -hmm. And then you got to realize a lot of people, when you say pep, they think basketball. They think training. A lot of people didn't associate my name with education. So I had to deal with that because people sending their kids and having to trust this. And then I did so many things respectfully faster than a generation before me. And I think sometimes that even caused friction where I don't want to even use the word hate, doubt. I want to use the word doubt where they like, how is he doing it this fast? Or how he doing that? How he doing that? Because like you said, I jumped off the porch. I, I ain't never start nothing. I, I went all into this. Where you got other people who train, they teach, and coach, and do this and that. I don't. This is my day job. Like. So how do how do somebody get in, into like your school? How do you enroll to your school? Just like any other school, we got a website. You reach out. You go through a, a process. You go through a whole screening process, just with anything like any other school. So you go through our website. You go through the application process. We screen it. We get your transcripts. And you ain't necessarily got to play sports though. No. And that's the thing. See, we, what you we had tripping all on, what y'all, y'all got to get some St. Louis kids in there. <laughs> like, cause, that's the goal. You know but, what I'm saying? But, but, so, but what I'm saying is, so when I see a St. Louis kid, if I'm honest, I see myself, yeah. And but, I didn't mean the St. Louis did, kid is, I meant, is, is see, are you only been, y'all smart, y'all still growing. We if y'all could play, like, or if y'all could, if y'all could play, or play a PHL school, or so, play a. So a lot of stuff, we didn't have, a Misha license our first year. So I we see, couldn't that's play, what I know y'all We couldn't play St. Louis schools. I know, it's, I'm sure it's coming up and, and it's, I don't understand how that stuff go with it. But the goal is to have students that don't play basketball. But I said, off the back, everybody only trust me with yeah, basketball. Right. So I'm trying to grow and tell people about the business. Like, yo, you sending your son here for, come here and let us really touch him and mentor him, this, this, and that. And I'm trying to be the walking proof of that. Like, these are the things that I learned. I didn't learn this in no textbook. I learned going in meetings and thinking that these people want to help me. In reality, they were they were screwing me. You know what I mean? They was killing me. I, I had to learn the terminology. Dog, dog world. I had to learn that it's what can you do for me. We're not really friends. I had to it's learn that. Business. You get what I'm saying? And this is what people, once you get, once you really sit down at that table, they want theirs. You know what I'm saying? And what chances are you going to take? And we live next to people that take chances every single day in different ways. We just been taught to take the wrong chances. And we be risking it all. We I'm a risker, you know what I'm saying? But I have to I'm developing better habits and becoming more disciplined. You know what I'm saying? So it's you just learn so many different things and that's what we trying to, you know what I'm saying, put and bring to each other. Like I say, shit. I want to get back to the basketball shit because I, I love all of that shit to school because that's deep because I ain't going to lie. Even when I heard your name, I know it's all about basketball. You know what I'm saying? Like, even yeah, everybody know you shit. It's the same damn thing with both of y'all niggas. But when it comes to basketball, like this nigga asked me, right now the finals is going on, everybody watching, you know, everybody know Jason from the city. Shit, that nigga say Jason's number one. But like I told him, it's, it's hard for me to say this just because you give Brad the same team, who to say that they not third? See, in an NBA setting, I would say Jason. Brad, Brad, Brad Jason one on one. Who you take? See, Jason a little bit bigger. He's he can do more he things. He's much. Well, he learned from Brad. See, he he I mean. was close, so he played. They play very very similar. He just bigger and can do a little bit more stuff. 
but they both can lead a team to a championship. Brad just need a little bit more help. He needs somebody like he need like when he got hand. Russ, he got to the first round. You feel me? They got to the playoffs. They didn't have, you know, that thing that they needed to get past. But sometimes, like my boy B, I think he's just going to have to know, like, sometimes you got to be selfish with that ball. You got to take it into your own hand. And, and, and say, man, you got come here, everybody bring it in when you're on the bench, man. But so Bro, talented now. It, takes it ain't more, time to do all that. It take more than one. Yes, then, but it takes – if you can get your team to the fourth quarter, you got to bring it home. But it's so much Sometimes, more than that, though. Like, you just got to bring it your home. Your organization got to want to win. Okay, that's a good Look one. at Washington. They hold that's team a good form. one. That's what I said. The take bread off of that team. They clearly <laughs> trying to make money in the fourth quarter. Listen, here. The whole team's Br- form. But if you Brad and you the star, you know you're not going nowhere. So you got to so feel Brad like. So Brad doing what he supposed to do. He's 30 a night. He's going to get a super max, man. What? Like, hey, take care of his family. So you so make it. trying to get the bag. I ain't saying that's bad. That's bad. The bad. That's so so when you talk about him and Jason, Jason doing what he supposed to be. Your little bro supposed to do the things you do and try to suppress you. If you talk about one on one, this man is huge. He's almost a huge. Like, why would we even ask Brad to be able to like? You know what I mean? I, I think Tatum, my top five players in the NBA. I think this is my. Just I think I think it goes. Tatum, you say you think this top five this, players in the NBA this year, this year, right now. Finals. Pat, with this him going to the go. finals, and this Tatum and starting and to play. We're gonna go. We're gonna go. Giannis. We're gonna go. Stephen Curry. Kevin Durant and uh and Joe L B. Look, I don't think about the top five number. Yes. That's huh? Tatum. I don't think you top five number. That's Tatum. Don't let me don't let me mix mix it up because the camera gonna run me back. It's Tatum. No kitch, man. No, he's not in there. Look, I just asked my cousin. Hey, hey, Giannis, hey, Steph, Tatum, Giannis, Steph, KD, and TJ MB. the other day. When it came to a healthy Paul George and his prime or Jason Tatum. Who you Jason taking? be killing Paul George. And they prime. Who you he taking? be killing dude. Maybe we have we even seen Jason's prime? Have historic. we seen Jason's prime yet? He only twenty four. That's what I'm saying. Have we seen it took prime? the ride he was twenty eight to get up there. Ain't nobody did this is cool. only twenty four. They, they say you ain't. They say Jace can beat everybody in the world in one on one right now. <laughs> everybody in the world, I give him a run for his money. Like I give him a run for his they money. Say they say you're your prime around about twenty eight to thirty. That's usually typically the prime. He only twenty four. Pep, so how bad you beat BJ? What are we going to? We got money on this. Where are we going to? Like, first of all, what are we going you know, to? We like talking money. Twelve. Ice, like, huh? Twelve. Ten. We go. We go ten. to seven all seven. weeks. You say seven. three dribbles. We go to seven all say weeks. Say three dribbles. I've been whatever we got in here right now. We got one. Say two, three, three dribbles. Three dribbles. No, we play two dribbles. Two dribbles. Two dribbles. Two dribbles. I'll play three dribbles. I'm playing two with him. He said four. Every point you score, I give you twenty bucks. Please. <laughs> Every point you score, I give you twenty dollars. You play the twelve. You say you're the number one. one I get so you play. Exactly. Pep gonna get over forty dollars. He gonna get over forty dollars. When they come to one on one, we talk about one on one. A lot of people talk. A lot of people say this, but I I really be proof. Nobody in our city. I usually say guard. I, I like to say six two and under. But to be honest, I'm starting to starting to look about that six four range. <laughs> Listen, you know how a boxer move about his class. That's why people respect me around the world. I'm the best one on one player ever. See, look, like, to be honest, I know look, my, my boy, my boy six eight. He's hey, so anybody honest, six four. I need to teach the other respect people. Respectfully, but I don't want to teach nobody. I, when they be saying, I don't want to teach nobody like, the ones want, two step. When we get our guys to go out of town, as far as with the ballers life mm-hmm. and all these different groups, oh, let's talk. All these different groups that do the different things with the one on one stuff. God will strike me down now. Hey, shout out to you. I Ice keep on. saying BJ Young will beat everybody in one on one. They don't believe me. And I think sometimes, because he, he'll look nasty in the five on five from time to time. He'll come in there, call foul, just look trifling sometimes. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, he'll do that. He, he, he would really do that. You know what I'm saying? And be on some, like, they'd be like, nah, I don't see it. But when it comes to one on one, and him getting downhill, I think Different. people forget he's six folk. I think people forget he's explosive and they forget about his motor and just competitive nature. You get what I'm saying? So, I'm picking, if we got to send one person, and I'm not sending myself, I'm sending BJ. But I'm 10, you know what I'm saying? And I'm we sending listen, you. And you playing for 10, I ain't, I ain't going to her to get elbow to play fight with nobody. I ain't finna, you ain't, ain't, we ain't doing all that. I'm taking this shit outside and we doing that. Like, we ain't finna play, for, I'm coming to play ball. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if it's money online, and it's a certain amount of time, you got to be able to do a lot of things. You got to be able to shoot, pump fake, jab, hezzle, come, reverse dribble, double cross, 
skate to the side, you feel me? Like all this within five seconds. So you ain't gonna be able to stop me from doing none of that. If you get so close, I'm gonna retreat dribble, freeze your stupid ass to cross and jump. I do say, go, I don't think, I think. Jump left or jump right. <laughs> yeah, if it's a five second clock, I think, I think I will struggle with it. Because he, with his size, he'd be able to get down there around the basket and like spin, lay it up. But if we do two dribbles, I'm leaving out the gym every time. Yeah, I any, any high school in the city right now is just to be the next. I need to get re-tapped in. I think I'll school. be tapped in with him. St. Louis is a hot spot right now. This is the most, right now, currently, probably most D1 players we ever had. But is it like that because of social media? Because I oh, play yeah, 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 yeah. Social media. Yeah, told yeah, back yeah. in the day. He was the first one on social media. If you want to be totally honest, he was the first one to G4 get money, the first one who mixed tape. Man. He's Soldier Boy. I got to get him. And didn't know it, bro. Hey, I'm, I'm on the internet talking boy. like, yo, man, I'm going to come see these guys, man. And I really wanted to play against them because they was actually inspiring me to be better. Yeah. These people was... Big at the time and name value, and I ain't realize when you say somebody name on a platform, it just stay there. Yeah. It's just especially if it wasn't go viral. Yeah, like, I respect everybody. You know that's why sometimes you just speak on people because you just respect them. But you know, this era with them having a camera in their face every day and had all these followers and people, they got it a lot sweeter. Yeah, yeah. 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 like a lot yeah. Like, yeah. So, like, so, 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 so I got. So this is this is a conversation that always comes about when you get to talking about the differences and errors and stuff like that. That is true. With social media, it makes it way easy. One clip can change your life. That is true. But this era, globally, at all levels of basketball, is much more talented. And people never believe me when I say that. No, I the it. things that these kids are doing with the basketball. Or we it's, wasn't, it's we wasn't, so early, we man. were not doing that with the basketball. We talking about that with football. Nigga, we were not doing that basketball. So, now. you have outliers, though. You have people in, in every era that can do them in I every era. I have to era. do the math on that. I don't want to do you too You can do you. You can do you in every era. Your motor right now, that competitive nature ain't the same. Because these kids didn't grow up. In the open gyms, having to play with older kids. Forty-one percent from three. I shot the next. I had played two seasons, but just say I leave on a year. I left, I'm supposed to. I'm, I'm, I'm a rare. It's a rare thing to do what I did. That's why when these kids come to college the first year, like, but they come from schools. But you're not an average yeah, kid, so it, we're not comparing them to BJ Young. You comparing an average kid to the average kid. <laughs> these kids now. No, no. When you first come to college, what would you consider a good first year for a college Division One player? Oh, are they even getting on the floor? Are you talking about a pro? Are you talking about somebody going pro? That's what, what are you asking? If you had a mid-major, what you want your numbers to look like your first season? As a, a mid-major freshman, average What about, you happy with in 27 minutes about, per game? About, if he playing 27 minutes, about 9 and 10 points. Okay. At a mid-major, yeah. Okay. What if, you had a, what if you had a high major? That's you, same thing? Same thing? You taking the same thing? About 12. Okay. And I got another question. You might go to the league too, <laughs> about Jason too. Twenty seven minutes. Is Jason a two way player? Yeah, that's one of the best in the NBA. He's definitely a two way player this year. That's what separates him from Steph and But Jason, but Jason, Pat Beverly say said Jason Jason played defense. Pat Beverly crazy. But, but Jason, but the St. Louis thing. One. He know I want to see him. And Jay Arkansas, we got this Arkansas, Chicago, St. Louis thing. Well, it's hard to for Chicago people to accept St. Louis people. Like we like their yeah. little brothers or something. I said, but we not. Love, love we love them though. We, we love got them more too. NBA players in them right now too. Chicago. And then Missouri. we did five on five. Missouri. 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 Missouri.
for real. So, I was really so, trained. So that really like, showed really great the difference. Coaches, Majority of kids, like my generation, we start training late high school, but we hooped every day. These kids now, they training at four, five, yeah. six. So they are extremely skilled. You in the NBA right now, you watch an NBA game, everybody can make a play. Yeah, Bobby looks like tough. It'll be sick. He tough. The things he can do at a basketball at that age, I didn't even, like, we didn't consider it. The way he understands terminology at the young age is advanced. These kids, like, you got the older guys that are watching and be like, man, these kids, this and that, man, they will bust y'all ass. I swear to God. They talent level, they don't have that that same competitive nature all the time because so, they ain't on the playground every day. Like we right, So do that fuck them up to the next level where, like you said, they start off very skilled, but when they finally do reach college or NBA level, they struggle because they don't have the fundamentals. They don't have a lot of the shit. That, no, they, and, and that's what people, they don't have that dog. You can question, that. so that's black that's, top. That's what, what separates them is different. dog. It ain't fundamentals, skill. Right. They got the skills, skills pay the bills. Mm-hmm. Skills going to always, if you got skills in dog, you're going to always be better than the player with just dog. Pat Bell is a player My big brother has dog. seen Jason Tatum. I got a nephew the same age as him. They the same class. He seen Jason Tatum when Jason Tatum was in eighth grade, and my nephew and him was playing against each other in the game. And he said, you see that kid, Jason? That's my man. He said, that's the, he said, Jason Tatum, my big brother. He said, Jason Tatum, that's the best kid in St. Louis history, little bro. I'm like, like he like, look, bro, he gonna be like that, and I don't think I was on my way to see him. He like this dude is amazing, and he premeditated, and he and he and he's so smart to where he can plan out. He gonna plan out every step from here to now on, and but he, he was grown right now. But he was grown. <laughs> he, right. he was grown. So, yeah. He was grown. It's a different. So it's it's funny when we talk back about it as we grow. We see like when you grow, it's like. What was your daily? Yeah. What was your daily schedule? And be totally honest. My in daily, high school. In high school. See, a what pub, did you, see, this is what I said when I just learned. You city and St. Louis really ain't the same place. It's the same. We the same. But growing up in a public school, my daily routine was might be go with the guys after, or go to practice, like go to the gym, get to the gym however I could. When you're in a private school and you're in an organization, you're getting took to the gym. Right now, as soon as you walk out the doors and it's like, ain't no time to kick it with the guys and all that. Like it, Your day was never planned. You just went with it, right? Yeah. We at school, we might shoot a text like, yo, we finna go to the gym after this, this, and that. We gonna go get some Chinamen. Yeah. We gonna go eat, get back to the gym. Some fellas gonna girls, do Girls, you feel me? It's all uh, Ooh, and, and, and public school girls, shout out to y'all. Like, <laughs> y'all so bad. Like, <laughs> that's, it is a whole different but what situation. The groom, what the groom <laughs> kid gonna do? Situation. Jason and Brad, they went to, they went to all boys schools. When he talked about public yeah. schools, they went to all boys schools. Right. It groomed you a different way. And then they had handlers in a way where Big Tat and all them, they going to make sure, like, hey, He's before you have fun, get them hours in. Get them hours in. And you would, and, and, a, and, a, and an all boys school is like a, it's like a penitentiary in a way. It's like a penitentiary. It's like literally you go into school, bro, you tucking your shirt in, like, you feel me? You going into the hallways, it's, Ain't no females in there, bro. For four years, you're totally different than us. You're not even, not saying, you ain't got to be looking at these no like You just focused on, damn, man, I got to get the basketball is, practice. Man. Basketball right. first, second, everything else, you still a kid. And the you older guys, that, but it's after they know that. Work. Like, if you was 50, you know that. Oh, he got a public school. He got too much to worry about. Yeah, yeah, you go through the work. So, but like I said, though. Jason is the, the next generation. His dad went through it, watched Larry make it, their best friends, their family. So now he gave that game to his son. You so, get what I'm saying? Right. So right. shit like that, like even with the public school, private school thing, that's why I go back to like players like Ben and Pat them. The legit. Yeah, and Pat shout out to CBC. Pat and Ben. Yeah. Before he finished, me, BJ, a lot of people, we don't mention their names yeah. near enough. I'm going to ask y'all where, where they sit at. We know. They top 10. I just said it. Yeah. They top 10. It ain't not that I'm mentioning. It's just, you know, I got my, sometimes I got favorite players. Like, sometimes we got favorites. That's the same little. We and just a got lot favorites of times, in his story. A lot of times, a lot of times, names. people don't understand what this pro stuff is. A lot of times, it's about situation. A lot of them cats in the league that don't have a role to be more than what their role is really got game. Like, a really, 
Like we think some players in the league be trash. Man, he tra- man to come violate you, man. No league in the league. In every <laughs> yeah, he's, getting, he's making <laughs> he's making his twelve million to do what they ask him to do. And when we add, and when we say Ben, and when we say Brad, we said them together for a time being, and then we said them a, a difference for a time being because yeah. B averaged thirty. Points, thirty points. Yeah, you know I mean, what I mean? Like in high school, they had them on some. In the NBA, that's crazy. So, yeah. crazy. so the yeah, question used to always be, who better, BJ, Brad, and Ben? People used to always ask that. And my, if you ask me, if you talk about just raw, raw talent, it was him. But if you talk about package, polished, and ready to go, it was Brad. When you talk about potential, it was Ben. And that was the best way. So, like, Brad was the one that was, if they had to do something to somebody, he was the one that was going to have the strategy, the best plan to do it. He was going to sit back and do it. BJ was going to run up and do it. Like, man, come on, we finna do this. You know what I'm saying? what it is. Like, yeah, that's what it, it is. Over with. Let's so, go ahead. he was going to accomplish it, maybe, but how long was he going to last with that? You get what I'm saying? Brad was going to accomplish it. Might took a little longer, not as flashy doing it. Don't and he realized you didn't have to bump your head to learn things. Yeah, you can learn from somebody else first, mm-hmm. and then take their mistake and yeah, then go fix it. Shit. Yeah, like and, you can go. And who should have learned? Another person that should have learned from BJ is Cam Beachard. I don't care yeah, what you him. what rest off, rest in peace. I don't care what nobody said. None of them guys can guard him. None of them. They couldn't guard him. Bro, we played them senior year. Camera, and dude, I played against that dude, Louis. bro. He hit me with a crossover, bro. I did not know he was. I never got across, bro. He jumped, bro. You know he do the little yeah, jump. Yeah. Then he right to left, Boy, that bitch. Yeah, oh, yeah, damn, yeah. see? Hey, and hey. he sprayed my ass. Oh, when you talk oh, about oh, baskets, I, like, I promise you, I ain't saying it because that was my partner, and I ain't saying it because he wasn't. He's no longer with us. You know what I mean? Special, like when you talk about special. Like, he was that dude See, where like we all be like, man, like if I grew, dude. I'd be a killer. He randomly went from 6'2 to 6'7 over a summer. You know what I'm saying? He can always shoot, but he grew five inches in one summer. And that's what you can't teach. You can't teach that. So, he had a straight ratchet. So, once he, he just got caught up in, in that St. Louis mindset. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? To where we don't know how to cut that switch off sometimes. Like, we go somewhere. Fight it don't matter. Hand fight just to we don't. It don't matter where we go. Up. It don't yeah. matter where we go. You gonna know if somebody from St. Louis. You gonna know. It's something about us. We gonna be like, I'm from, I'm from Lou. I'm from Chris. Just love the Lou though. It's just always we got a different aura about us, and it's something about this place where we carry it with us, and where if you ask Jason who the best, this is that. He like we were just talking about before we came on. He might not say I'm the best in the league. He gonna be like. I'm the best from the loop, or this, this, or something like that. We care about being the best from the loop. <laughs> Everything else we get to <laughs> later. Pride of it's something right. about our city, because but it's what built us. Yeah, we don't have no professional basketball team like yeah. these other cities. We are the professionals from our city. Yeah. Like, most people don't know that, like, we are the hoop law. And it's like, when you go to New York, you might have the Knicks. You might have this and that. You ain't got that here. You got Brad, BJ, Larry. In us right. versus all y'all whole teams in the history. So if if it was a team here, we don't know how many players it would have been in, in, in the NBA. You know what I'm saying? That help. I ain't even go to an NBA I game until I got in the NBA and see what that. Have you been to an NBA game, Pep? You know how that feel like with your team and your fans and this stuff in the town. It's different. It's different. It's a little different. So, but you, is it any politics? Is it any players? I guess I can say. We were talking about St. Louis is most definitely a talent waste zone. Uh-huh. Any players right now in the St. Louis leagues that you feel like if they had, shit, I don't know, the shot, whatever, they can legit be playing? Right now, mm-hmm. uh, honestly, no. Right Talk now, after I've been more involved in this process and able to see it, and I'm not including college players, I'm just including guys in the league. We got a couple college guys that's probably on their way or at least going to get a shot. But... You got to be very special to get in the league. It's only been 5,000 NBA players ever. You know what I mean? And, what, and if you pay attention, look at the similarities for all the guys that have made it. They can really shoot the basketball. They're yeah, taller. Good they taller and can really shoot. See, Jason. I asked that because I was saying, like I said, the stats of what's dude, Munson. 
unreal. Yeah, this nigga's yeah. stat line, this shit look crazy. He's <laughs> un- <laughs> like, what? So <laughs> damn, 15 and 16. He's I'm like, unreal. Well, hey, nobody can go out with a guy like this since he was little to put up big numbers. I'm nobody like, can go out with him, but, but when you talk about, and this is just my honest opinion, when you talk about the NBA, he's very, like, he's special. Like, he, if you throw him out there for 30 minutes, he's going to have some stats because he's that much of a freakishly weird athlete. You know player. who he would be in the NBA? A guy like, he could be Bruce Brown, but he would have to develop yep. a three-pointer. The Bruce Brown for the Knicks? Yeah, yeah, he, he could be Bruce Brown for the Knicks, so but he thing. would have to develop a three. Like, and Bruce he would Brown have to be a hustle guy. Shit. A good, yeah, he run up and down the court fast, and he do his part, and he do that. Get up off the ground, rebound, but Munson would have to commit to the defense, and I've never seen him do that. So but, what, what 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 league you gotta come down here and kill in? Like what league is St. Louis for you be like you? Regardless of like, all the leagues. Work. Shout out to Show Me League. That league is extremely fun. I love it. It's like it's best well, it's the most organized, well ran run. They keep it fun, it's for money, different type of stuff. The pro am is still gonna all and forever be the top league in St. Louis. All the guys are home, you get your real professionals and see clean. look. If show me, let me tell you, you're right. Killing the pro that's when you get established, like, nigga. Yeah, I mean, any league, because St. Louis is the only place niggas hoop today's 90. <laughs> you can't go nowhere else. And I'll be like, dang, do we even got jobs here? Nah, is everybody always available to hoop? We hoop all day, and we take it serious. Other places, at the college and high school, they just hoop for fun. They don't take it serious. Here, we on the internet, arguing. We heard on this podcast talking about it. All day, every day. That's what we on. Like, but when the show matter. league moved to a different gym, it can't though. It can't. Shit, it can't. It's it part of it. Part of that makes see, it. See, see, you go in the church. You gotta grow. You no, grow. no, it's you part of it. I went to that championship. That championship, that championship game. Matter of fact, no. for the ball out of bounds. Yeah. Yeah. Keep no. bumping it back. Like, what that's it. what I'm saying. See if it grow. I get. I come get him fifty in there for real. You feel me? I don't want to see right now. I can only get fifteen in there. Eighteen. No. You oh, keep it in there on the court. This is the thing. Look, they had money on the line. Nigga, I'm seeing the ball going out of bounds and like niggas are just sitting right there bouncing it. The, I'm like, what the fuck? It's, the it's, it's, it's part of it. It's part of it. It makes it. You put it in the different gym, the air conditioning too nice. Everybody in there cozy. It ain't packed because it's just a regular man's league. Like, nobody's pulling in fans to the man's league like that. Go to any other man's league. You don't see that. It ain't people on the court. Like, it ain't that vibe. Like, hey, it got to be that. What's up with you on that? When you won that, what's that, Tech 2, 3K? And then one on one tournament? Like, it was 1K. It was a K. It was, it was K's, man. You won K. Y'all but how you won that? guy, y'all like. I beat the Brian guy, y'all. Ball is like, why they be going on the road, my boys, man? Why they be going on the road getting clapped? Tell them we got to get some wins for St. Louis this summer, man. If we ain't going to be in the NBA. We so what I will say, when we the ones watching it, it always look easier than what it is. As you know, as a competitor, people be like, why yeah. you ain't do this, this, and that. But definitely, at St. Louis, we definitely want to see them go win more for sure. So shout out to them. I hope they continue to go do that. Uh, but if you talk about the individuals on it, Who's probably, Brighton's probably the best. What you would do if you I think Brighton, Brighton match up? I ain't, why y'all ain't match up in the one one tournament? I'd like to see y'all match up. That's like Floyd and Pacquiao, I guess. You know what I mean? We're going to let it build up for some time. And then, and to be honest, I'm into the, like, uh, it's weird. I really like doing this. But for the people that's in that lane, I don't be wanting to step on their feet either. You know what I mean? Like, I like to stick on the training side. I don't want to get it too confused. I just come out here and do that. From time to time, <laughs> like, cause that's what I really like to do. But I don't be one of you. Know, we might have to turn the sum up though. Sometimes, like me and Brighton play, it. I'd rather do it off camera. I'd rather do it off camera, uh, unless he uh, insists on doing it. Because now that's his decision. It's like, all right, well, we do it on camera now. You know what I mean? And we do you that. Say he just wants the credit. Hey, 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 How about this? It's not one person. Not one. You can't find one person in the whole city who said they beat me. Not one. And I've been, and I'll check up with everybody from a little kid. Hey, shout out to B Ray. Shout out to B Ray. Hey, we already know. Shout out to Lil Cool. I will be B Ray 7 1. Matter of fact, I will be B Ray 7 1. I don't want to FaceTime. B Ray. B Ray will beat him. That's his kryptonite. Man, he's not. B Ray had two points. We in the district championship. Two times. He was a snatchback. Shout out to my little bro. 
Oh, he, he put went, you down. He he went, went, I got dropped. Hey, he put you down. Oh, man. Man. I put him down. I see how it felt, but it won't. It was really easy to stop. That was the defensive oh, guy. Damn, that was the only two points. <laughs> he put. That was the two biggest two of the game. Put you out like the whole face right out the jail. How about this? Everybody, how about this? <laughs> I ripped every guard on their team. Everybody <laughs> like this. <laughs> I, I give him. And and he you told me. Bet on and he told me. And he told me. Y'all was up dub. We wasn't. And, and they was up. We came down. They beat us though. We choked. We choked. Was y'all off 20? In the first quarter? By no. the first? We was down 15. And we can't. Y'all was up by dog. No, we was down 15. And they and stepped on you. They beat us. <laughs> hey, that hurt to this day. They beat us. They beat us. I get them. Man. It's all right, man. It's but all nobody right. beat me in one of them. You got any losses to beat huh. Historically? Yeah, you know, you the type to walk yeah. off, fake shoulder. Oh. Yeah. Beat me in one on one would be. So hard. What are we gonna play for some money for free? It don't matter either way. I ain't losing. I, I like, like gentlemen bets. Oh, yeah, hey, I'm at a point in my life I really like gentlemen bets. They keep the game honest. You don't know what situation people be in their life when y'all be playing with the money. They just get the door wild. I'm like, hey, bro. Like he said, let's keep it basketball. All keep it peaceful. So when we do the gentleman bet, I'm more in it for the ego. So y'all going on camera though. I'll play BJ on camera. Yeah, three because dribbles. Because me, me and him in the same space, like, we really, you know, we, like, enjoying it, like. And we're going to do, what we going to do? We're doing two we dribbles. We a ref? Two dribbles. A ref? Yeah, because you call foul every position. I'm going to say we're going to have 5,000 feet. No, because you call foul every position. <laughs> you call foul every position. Pimp. Listen, man. This is this is defense. defense. This is defense. This is what that's what I'm saying. I can't like play defense turn. like that. That is a foul. I won't foul so you. listen. I won't foul you. When you I did. got the ball Whoever in your face, DJ. you can't have a hand on me. That is a fact. You can't do this. Because look, I'm only playing him because you, you, he is who he is. But I'm starting to feel like this. Everybody wanting to play me now. Why I done beat so many people. They gotta start beating. They gotta start beating each other. They gotta start beating. TJ got beat somebody for me beating. I play. I play anybody. You play a big guy like TJ. TJ six six. He gonna be, he beat me. Beat me. He gonna have to beat me. He gonna have to beat me. But you gotta think about it. Anybody six three and taller. I'm really. I prefer six three and under. No, TJ said anybody. Oh, it can't be BJ probably. Let me see who would be a good game for him. For TJ. <laughs> TJ, <laughs> you got some money. You can have a win. Hey, don't get it twisted. TJ, can you be right? TJ said either back side. TJ said he already beat him. Oh, I didn't know that. We gotta confirm it. Hey, we right, grew up together. Then y'all grew up on the same team. Yeah, a little. No, right now is much younger than him. We gotta fact check that. He grew up with Randy. He can't Ray be Randy. Randy Reed. Ray Ray he can't be Randy. Rose, TJ. No, he can't be no Randy. You can't be Randy, TJ. That's a tough one, huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Randy tough. Randy tough. Yeah, but no, I'm ready. Just some, I'm ready. All summer. Who? Tyreek. Uh, probably not, but <laughs> Tyreek, ain't, Tyreek ain't, he ain't, ain't, he ain't really that one-on-one. -on -one. Hey. He, he the running lane type. So, just because you beat people one-on-one -on -one don't always mean you better. I don't know. I don't you know, know what I'm saying? Yeah. I want to ask y'all about But you say you better than a lot of niggas. What for sure. What, what, what you guys think about that young thug and, and gunner situation, man? These Rico, these rappers getting Rico. Mm -hmm. Some nigga about to tell. <laughs> they <laughs> they think already it's started, fair, though? Yeah, they already... I don't think it's fair. A lot of times they don't even be involved in right. a lot of shit that be going on. Man, fuck. Hey, no, no, That's I what I'm saying. You didn't went, to, you just went of, to Atlanta with us, right? Yeah, but I'm what saying. Where we stayed in Atlanta? They said, man, y'all over in Lucci Hood. Atlanta legit is ran by the rappers for real. Like, they shit. Uh, who like the now. best rapper in St. Louis? My nigga Rodney. I'm a bad Rollo. Rollo? Yeah. I'm a Foles fan. I was like, who? I like LA. I ain't gonna lie, I like D. I like it. Oh, my mom. You know how I ain't D. Payne. 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 A lot of the niggas don't blow. They all say it's a hating ass city. It's not a hating city. St. Louis is a fact checking city. So when you talk about <laughs> guns, drugs, all this shit, and nobody know who you are in the yeah. city, like in the streets, that shit over with. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, it's over with. Yeah. Like, and it'd be crazy how we'd get a, a rapper like dude from her, her, and they'll you know blow. Because when you go out of town, you can reinvent yourself. What's right. my boy name that be with? Think about how many niggas, like I say, going to Normandy. 
Man, think about how many niggas want to know like say you, you send them know they were straight rubies. They leave that motherfucker somewhere else. They they them niggas out of nowhere. Like, you know, like what the fuck hell? But our rappers got to our rappers got to continue to invest in themselves though. You know what I mean? Just like with any, you gotta put some money behind yourself. Like y'all started this, y'all have to buy it. You know what I'm saying? You have to buy the things. You gotta as a rapper, you need to put money behind your image. Take time. Man. Man, understand look, what shit. Rappers there, we got new mics, man. Go to Amazon. That shit come here, you <laughs> never got it. Get all your money back. Get everything back. Everything you need, I'm gonna stop playing with you. No, dude, hey, dude. you Amazon. got it. I just got into Amazon. Hey, speaking of Amazon, I just bought something off Amazon. I'm gonna to open it today. I want D Pain and State to do a song together. This, hey, dude. hey, my I favorite rapper. I just kind of got hip to State. I That's just so kind of got hip to State. Oh, and it. show out cold. Oh yeah, show, 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 hey, show up cold. Show ain't impressed me. He ain't gonna lie, impressed me. He cold, and he's getting shout better and better, scene, better and better. Shout out to showing that rap scene. Yeah, yeah. I've been a fan since he was rapping about. I'm not like, hey, I don't know where my feet. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he's sick though. He got good. He got good videos. He got good sound. I think he's a natural born entertainer. That's, in that's the whole part. family. You did? The whole yeah, family of that nigga and all that. Man, no, that's, no, I just said they got a little neck one too. That's the whole family. Oh, man, you said you cold, you need a hoodie. I am, I ain't open the rest. Mini, uh, 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 mini, yeah, we ain't gonna tell the names, right? That is What's DJ Young Activision. You know how these coming from China. I saw you this movie. This movie? movie? Oh, yeah. yeah. I was in a movie, The Hustle Movie. It's an Adam Sandler's movie called Hustle. It's about two basketball players, Anthony Edwards and a guy named Wancho Hernan Gomez. They both in the NBA. Wancho played for the Jazz, and Anthony Edwards played for the Minnesota Timberwolves. Wancho is from, I don't wanna get his country mixed stuff, but he's from overseas. And he, it's a story about a guy, him, a guy from overseas making his way back to the NBA. It's about me for real, but they the stars. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> so it's a guy, about a guy from overseas making his way back to the NBA, and he's eventually going to clash with the, the um, prospect, yeah. the regular prospect, the regular American prospect. And uh, throughout the scenes, he's, you know, Wancho from overseas, he's struggling with his family. And he's trying to figure out a way to make it all away from overseas, from poverty and, you know, fields, dirt fields and stuff like that, to get to the NBA. And um, a GM, Adam Sandler, is the GM in the movie, and he's trying to find a prospect. He's been messing up. He's been almost out of the league. He's, about, he's on his last leg. He's about to get fired. And um, he's looking for a prospect. And Wancho is his prospect. And um, his, he has a different name in the movie. I think his name is Bo in the movie. And uh, so Bo is his prospect. And uh, Anthony Edwards has a different name. They're going to be competing. And I'm in basketball scenes with them. Like, you know how the basketball scenes, like yeah. glory roll and all that. We we, we in the scenes. You're and I'm a point guard. Huh? You're a cone. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, uh, I'm a, what they would call an Easter egg in the movie for the <laughs> YouTubers. So I'm going to be an Easter egg. See if y'all can see me on the side. Like, so I'm going to be in a scene to where, like, Anthony Edwards comes in the gym and a guy Mike Foster, the draft pick for next year, this upcoming draft is in the same with him. Like we sitting right th- like this next to each other. And Anthony Edwards, he sees him and he say like he look at him and he like, oh, you he threw the ball to the chest like you supposed to be the upcoming draft, huh? Well check up then, let's play. And I'm looking at him like, damn. He talking to him like this. I'm looking at him like, damn, you know, go crazy on his ass. Like, so Mike like he had his jeans on and he like this. He he looked at him. He get the ball. And he goes to the rim, he just, he go up and dunk it. And then he just look at uh, look at him, he toss at the ball back out and he walk out the gym. And then everybody, all the fans are like, okay, okay, we see what's to him. Like, he on it. And, uh, you know, it, it keeps progressing through the movie. But the experience on the set with Adam Sandler and all of them was a, it was a life changing, another life changing experience. I said that when I was younger back in the day in Potomac. But that was because Adam Sandler was so humble and he was so rich, you couldn't even tell. Like the man, so rich, bro. Sketches. What this is y'all got some pretty good production right here. Just imagine this times a zillion, bro. This man had a crane camera so tall, it would look like a building. <laughs> For real, it was a camera and it could slide up and down the court fast. It was called the crane, bro. They had to pick it up and adjust it and everything. No cap, they don't know what I'm talking about. 
It was some great production. Like when is movie post? When is movie drop? Oh, is it it's coming out? on Netflix, right? Mm-hmm. It's coming on Netflix soon. It's I've been seeing the trailers in the NBA finals. Like sometimes they have the trailer doing the uh, commercials. It should be coming out in probably July, probably something like that. Yeah, that just go. That's what I'm saying. We ain't really, we ain't want to be in no movies growing up. Like we didn't hear about it was football, basketball, and track. You know what I mean? And rap. Then everybody yeah, started rapping. The Hooper <laughs> started rapping, and you know what I mean. Everybody started rapping. That was like we got to continue, you know, to spread our rise and Shit, understand it, it, different ways. Nowadays it's kind of harder because I talked to one of my partner. He coached football. That nigga say kids would rather be, it's cooler to be gamers than athletes nowadays. You get, you get rich off that. It's pretty smart. Yeah. YouTube. I don't know. You go to school for free off that? You get a scholarship for playing a game. Now. Damn. Yeah. I've been, I been beating these niggas ass in Madden so long. I ain't even paid some pay for it. You get paid for anything. You know what I'm saying? So, that's just kind of what it is. These kids, like we be outside all day, they be on that game. Get to the money, you know what I'm saying? I don't, I don't really be a game. Some parents, y'all can fucking be our kids' life. Truth be told, they might be in that motherfucker trying to play. They might be a pro. Push them outside. Yeah, he might hey, be a pro. They can be a professional. What's the game? Fortnite? Yeah. Four, 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 no, no that y'all really is outside. I'm not playing with no school. When that time y'all gonna hit a kid in, in the street? Gaming either. Well, I'm saying they don't be outside, boy. Oh, they don't yeah. see him on the black top like we used to be. Like, like. But that's the difference in the basketball. That's why today they super skilled because they gonna go to training for that hour, hour and a half. But they not learning how to play. When I go to the, when I go outside, I want to play with the older kids. So I don't get no shots yet. I gotta sit in the corner and play all the defense. These kids don't go through that transgression. They don't know how to play a role, and that's the things that they not doing well. But as far as with the ball, they all talented. Hey, you you seen a little bit of hoop growing up? Yeah, he was hoop. He was nice. Like he was under. He was nice. He was straight. He was solid. I would give him the solid, <laughs> the solid. You know the definition of solid. You know what I'm saying? He big. He big bro that's going to make sure we all get on the bus safe. Niggas get off the stop. bus safe. Okay, <laughs> so he wasn't. Hey, hey we he was had no bunnies. But then, no, he had no. He had a crossover and a little scrap a little bit. I think Louise used to know it. She was great. I used to know Louise. 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 That was the match I used to ask about. He only used to pick him up because he's security. Man, stop. You know what I'm saying? Turn he, he makes sure we all got home safe. He makes sure we all got home safe. Back in the day, you was devil. I would have killed you back in the day. Back in the day, I would have killed you. Back in the day, I would have killed you. Back in the day, I would have killed you. Back in the day, I would have killed you. Y'all used to play against Willie them and Louie. Yeah, you know, he's a fuck. Willie Willie wasn't with Maurice. Bring Willie out the fence, too, man. That's my dog. That's my nigga Willie. Willie wasn't with Maurice Scott then. Willie was the weak thing. He was Savage with Jay Jones now. We, Jones they, we, we never even played, man. Like, they was like, Willie was, nah. They so y'all ain't played Mo shit. Scott now? No, Mo Scott. We played them niggas every other championship, every fucking year. That was like, the rivalry right yeah, there. Mo Scott might have been the great JFL player. Oh, we, just, we just had this talk Dickie? last week, yeah. Mo Scott might have been. We just had this talk last week. He stopped growing. He already lit. In sports, in St. Louis history. If Mo ain't go start fucking up in school, he'd have been with a whole lot later. That's why yeah, you know, that's why like Nigga, St. Louis is a real. Why St. Louis people always get in trouble though. in school? Everybody. I don't want to say everybody. What's that? But a lot. What? St. Louis people get in trouble at school. School wasn't going to college. It didn't depend on who you was and you had that type of name. I don't like, want to put that on them. I don't want to put it on them. No, I'm talking about in college. We don't know how many other people from other cities get in trouble. Yeah, no, I'm saying, why do we have. Yeah, you're right. But why do. I think a lot of our athletes get in trouble for similar reasons. We. I don't know if it would be trouble. I would say, I would say, yeah, making it out take a little longer. And then I don't think also we have enough white coaches in St. Louis. We don't. We don't so we can go from being coached by. When I was growing up in AAU, my coach could whoop my ass if he needed to with no repercussion. Like he put his hands on me if he had to. Like that's um, like that's like yeah. a, that's a real deal father thing in my life. Like, yeah, it's, it's a family. family for real. You send me to college, which I didn't have this experience. I had a good one. But a lot of times they be players first time playing for this white man. And it's different from Unk telling you, hey man, shut that shit up. And then this white man telling you, shut your ass up. Or this, this, and that. We respond like, hold on, what you on? And we don't, and we doing things that we might get away with at home. And then they don't see it as in this young black innocent kid who just expressing itself. They see us as angry and against them. 
and they don't see us expressing our emotions in a certain way, and they well, and it leaves the other We kind of talk to be like that too. And sometimes, yeah, when you that nigga, really? sometimes excuse me, when you with that guy or whatever you is in your city, when you go to a bigger platform, you're not him no more. Sometimes until you gotta start, yeah, go you gotta do something. Yeah. You gotta go kill. You gotta go. Excuse me. You gotta go. Put your working on the court. You gotta go, and then you still gotta be humble in that situation. So it's like uh, if you, if conflict come at us, we don't like to like adversity. We don't like to like man. We don't always, whatever. Yeah, we don't let it go. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah, we really know how to deal. Well, with that's good for young kids out there. Turning the other cheek and saying whatever. Mm. That's good. Let's uh, let Big Bro handle us. Uh, let's forget it, man. Sometimes. If long as he don't put his physical hands on you, okay, you lie. Right. Say you, you, right. say you, you If you ever have kids or whatever, you ain't gonna teach your kids that. We well, you always Since you been young, you always been taught to get your lips back. Yeah. Your mama tell you somebody yeah, hit you, somebody hit you back. Don't, don't they don't and we always think it. We never want to be hurt. accountable. We not accountable. We not accountable enough. I want to say like, how many people here in St. Louis right now who were talented who could have probably went a little further and they'd be like, man, but coach this, but coach this. <laughs> It's cold shit. Every nigga that went to Hazelwood Central, they yeah. all Hazelwood Central coach. supposed to have the most NBA players we and state championship. <laughs> but it's coach platform. For the lack of better words, when I say platform, it's like this is this is you gotta find a way to get in, learn his system or whatever that is, and then find a way to do you. Yeah. And that's in the real world. He ran his system when I was over at Coach Martin ran his Hazelwood Central system like a college. It was like a weird college though. It was like a I really had to play a role. I had to straight. Who the best coaches in San Luis? Randy Reed. Because that was your coach? It wasn't like the good guy. Randy Reed, he ran his like a, like he ran, Randy Reed had his like Kentucky. See, he knew, he really cared about the kids at the school. Say some colleges just, we'll get another school, we'll get another kid. It's kind of, I guess, every basketball program could be like, because I ain't been at other ones, also, I don't know how, but the two I was at, Hazelwood Central and McClure North, Reed was like, I'm going to focus on these kids. I'm a, whoever the best kid is, I'm going to build around them like the team should be built. Yeah. And I don't care about you kids' feelings. Y'all going to learn to play a role on a team. Or you going to quit because I ain't forcing you to be on the team. You definitely used to say stuff. Like Literally. So, and, and and that's, that's, North, I mean, if they shine in the summer league, they lose a game, and he grabs him and George and say, this is Shaq, this is Kobe. If y'all want to ride <laughs> their back, to hell with you. I'm like, man, what the hell? <laughs> he said that in front of the whole team. He grabbed BJ, grabbed Shaq, I mean, uh, Jordan, Jordan Granger, and say, this is Shaq and this is Kobe. If y'all want to get on their back, to hell with you. <laughs> and they won't say. So they might two, be. three people want them. Dummy. <laughs> 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 but no, the best coach in the state that year, I got Tony Irons. Uh, Somebody said Tony. Big Jason. Uh, Big Tech, I got him number two. Jay, I got RJ number three. I say Corey Fraser. Fraser. Corey Fraser. Pretty he left. He left. Brandon Gilmore. That's my Brandon Gilmore three. was a very good trainer through at Hazelwood Central when I was with him. Hey, that was my actual coach there. He gave the most love in the city for he's touched the most kids without see receiving the most benefits from it. Yeah, Brandon Gilmore. He be, you know what I'm saying? Like for real. He trained the whole he trained us all. He did. did. And I probably ten percent of us was paying him. Yeah. Before him I didn't even I had never went into drill training and went in line in lines and did like drills and stuff like that until my freshman year in high school. I had was doing it by playing one on one all the time, me shacking guys, so I was good at that and, and doing a dribble they taught us like stuff like how to do the calculator with the ball and stuff like that. But Head was the first person to do us in lines and say, huh, do this move and go yeah. between the cone. And, and I was good at it because I was doing other stuff. But he, once you start at that young age and advance, that's that's pretty good. I think that's a pretty good thing. To yeah, you. I think Head always been my, I feel like I owe him a lot. Especially with me being in the business, training business now, to know the sacrifices that he made for, you know what I'm saying, a lot of us. But with them, them my top three coaches, for sure. Dwayne and Hope is a good coach, too. I hate how a lot of people, uh, I think Dale Ripple, the, the Westminster coach, man, his teams execute like no other. But to me, to be the top dog, you got to win. You got to win. Like, I can't call you top if you don't win. And sometimes when you got white coaches, they get them more credit than what they want to give a black coach to because they out there running the plays, this, this, and that. But... I give credit to those guys like Tony Allen. That's what I was trying to say. Did they win instead of getting like? Yeah, they all these guys, they able to get all these guys 
these all these different personalities on one page and to play hard and execute it in a different way. I would I wonder if he's trying to be a college coach. Like if I was him, I would try to man, that's such bro, that's so raw. How you keep him in the state? Like he the best. He's gonna pass his pops up if he stays. That's he what best. I'm saying, it's possible. Yeah, he the best. I would try to I ain't telling them what to do. They can do whatever they want. He probably be good in his situation. But he like is how deserving much he of a college job. Yeah, He's like, deserving of trying to get a college job. For sure. I say shit. Hey, we talked about so much shit. I ain't going to lie. Like I said, my mans. I'm going to let them introduce themselves again. Y'all can follow them on YouTube. Like I say, Instagram, TikTok, wherever. They just nigga got everything. Like I say, hit them up for whatever y'all need. Leave comments on YouTube after this episode drop. Like I say, we here for everything. St. Louis, shit, before everything, everything, we trying to take over the city, take over the world. We got everything we need down here. Just need everybody, like I say, show your love and put it out here. <laughs> say shit. Oh, I'm freezing. It's all going to have some racks to them. Yeah, shit. For sure. You know, shout out to all the guys. I appreciate them having us on. We're going to try to do this. I'm gonna try hey, to do it once a week. Do this interview finna go up, trust me. And, and, and you know, shout, shout out, out to my guys, man. They gonna pass Vlad up. You know what I'm saying? They gonna pass a little bit of everybody up. They definitely doing their thing. Follow me on IG at pep underscore go live. Uh, Twitter pep stencil. Yeah, that's all I'm on right now. That's all I'm. I was on. wondering what was your what did that last name say? Thanks Stancil. for telling me that. Yeah, that's all I'm public to. Right I called you, you know Chantel. That's my real first name. We like that. That's it. That's it. That's it. Hey, wait. That's it. His name Bob. His name Bob. His name Bob. Bob G. That's Kobe Bob G. That's his name Bob. You know what I'm saying? But definitely shout out to them. Shout out to BJ. You know what I'm saying? BJ, the first real soldier boy with this St. Louis hoop scene. And then shout out to St. Louis, man. You know what I'm saying? BJ, best one on one player in St. Louis. I'll give it to him if I'm not including myself. Y'all know what it is, man. Love and loyalty to the podcast. Y'all fuck with it. Like, subscribe, man. Like, subscribe. <laughs>